is Monday, December 3. The debates of the 2019 national budget began today and will continue throughout the week. Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin announced that over $31 billion is expected from the tourism sector in 2019. Alexis Rodney has our first report. Addressing the National Assembly in the first day of the budget debates this morning, Minister Gaskin said that the figure does not include airfares or the taxes applied to airfares. Guyana has seen a 17% increase in visitors as of September 2018 compared to the same period last year. The minister said that this is good news for Guyana as visitors bring along with them money that is pumped into the economy. Visitors bring money into our economy. Visitors have to eat, sleep, travel around town or the country and each of these activities costs money and employs Guyanese people. According to Minister Gaskin, the additional 30,000 visitors arriving in Ghana this year meant that an additional U.S. $15 million has been circulated within the country. He said that the increase in visitors to Guyana over the last year is testimony to the important role the tourism sector is playing in Ghana's economic development. So what I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, is that apart from gold and rice, tourism brings in the highest amount of foreign earnings into Guyana's economy. And this amount is growing every year at a handsome rate. The business minister said that the government realizes the importance of this sector and its capacity to create and sustain employment and also the need to develop Guyana's tourism product to keep up with the increasing visitor arrivals. Continuing with the debates, Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Garrido Lowe, says the Indigenous peoples across the 10 administrative regions were equitably represented in Budget 2019. In her defense of Budget 2019, Minister Valerie Garrido-Lowe said that the Indigenous peoples can expect continued support through training and economic opportunities next year. For the past three years since this government took office, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs has been focusing on building the capacity of our Indigenous and hinterland people. Your government, Mr. Speaker, does not believe in handouts. We believe in empowering people and giving them the economic support required that they can create successful and meaningful lives for themselves. The 2019 budget supports more green, innovative and sustainable income generating projects to the tune of almost $60 million. According to Minister Gridelow, these projects will create jobs and generate income for residents in villages including Parima in Region 7, Santa Cruz and Tobago Hill in Region 1, and Marijuana and Bina Hill in Region 9. Mr. Speaker, these projects will directly impact the poor and the vulnerable by creating employment and generating income in these communities, thus raising the standard of living and providing the opportunity for indigenous brothers and sisters to live a good life. Additionally, $16 million was allocated for the cassava flour processing facility in Quibana, $6 million for the installation of a solar system at the crab processing facility in Smith's Creek, and $50 million for the construction of the green coffee processing facility in Santa Rosa. Sonica Thorne, InfoHub. Minister with Responsibility for Housing, Valerie Adams Yearwood, guarantees more affordable housing options for low income earners in 2019 as the government works to construct more than 350 low income housing units in several areas. The venture is among many others undertaken by the Central Housing and Planning Authority to provide persons in lower income bracket with housing opportunities. Minister within the Ministry of Communities, Valerie Patterson Yearwood, said CHNPA has designed several $4 million low income housing units, which will be on display in 2019. We will work with the private sector to deliver additional units across the country. House lots will be made available <coughs> to those who are desirous of constructing their own homes. Yes. Additionally, low-income housing schemes throughout the country will benefit from infrastructure upgrade. These areas include Sophia, Parfit Harmony, Bell West, Iflot, Ichuni, Kokwani, Kelkai Chesney, among others. Additionally, more than $20 million will be spent to provide full or partial subsidy for the construction of houses for 51 families in hinterland communities in Region 7. 
Minister Patterson Yearwood noted that along with these housing units, improved infrastructure is necessary. Funds will be provided to upgrade infrastructure in all CHMPA schemes, all, without exception. The construction of houses in all regions. In Region 1, Mabaruma is a mark for a significant upgrade. Cockroach Hill housing scheme will benefit from road upgrade and the construction of a community facility. In Region 2, roads will be upgraded at Anna Regina on the Neiman and Charity. And in Region 8 at Madia, a transportation terminal, community center, and concrete sidewalk will be constructed. The sum of $750 million has been allocated for the commencement of the Adequate Housing and Urban Accessibility Program, which will see the construction of core houses for single-family households and families living in uninhabitable homes, home improvement, and consolidation of existing housing schemes. Renetta LaFleur for InfoHub. Still to come, ExxonMobil announces the tent oil discovery offshore Guyana and Minister Alicock donates to Masaruni communities. Stay with us. Being diagnosed with HIV can be difficult, but there is hope. Treatment is free and available at HIV care and treatment sites. Medications are easy to take and will get the virus under control. It is important to know the names and not just the color of medications. NGOs have workers available to help you learn about the pills. Talk to your health worker about your treatment program. Welcome back. More good news in the emerging petroleum sector as United States oil giant ExxonMobil today announced its 10th oil discovery offshore Guyana. More in this report. The discovery was made at the Pluma One well and has increased the estimated recoverable resource for the Stabrook block to more than 5 billion oil equivalent barrels. Director of the Department of Energy, Dr. Mark Baino, said this could see Guyana being able to produce more than 750,000 barrels of oil daily by 2025. Dr. Baino added the recent discovery places Guyana in the position to forge ahead as a petro development state. The director noted strategic investment in people and utilization of non renewable resources is how the government will undertake structural transformation. This will also allow for a transition to a post carbon economy, Dr. Baino stated. Exxon Exploration Company President Steve Greenlee said the company will continue to work with the government to grow the value of the Stabrook block. Greenlee added the company will evaluate combining Pluma with Turbo and Longtail, previous discoveries, as part of a major development in the southeastern portion of the Stabrook block. Exxon and its partners will move exploration to the Tilapia One Prospect, located 3.4 miles west of the Longtail One well. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Still in oil news, the first ever LISA Phase 1 Suppliers Development Forum was hosted by the Center for Local Business Development. Tiffany Rogers tells us more. Esquire at the Department of Energy, Joanna Simmons-Homer, noted the forum is important to build and bolster local businesses as commercial partners in the development of Guyana's petroleum industry. The Department of Energy encourages and applauds the work of the Center for Local Business Development towards the process of building the capacity of local businesses. The standards of the petroleum industry are high, they are exacting, and our learning curve is steep. Nonetheless, success stories are emerging, and this forum is a birthing ground for even more. The inaugural ISA Phase 1 Supplier Development Forum is intended to facilitate direct communication between Guyanese supplier or service providers and Exxon's prime contractors. Exxon's country manager, Rod Henson, said local suppliers are strategically important to its operations. You all know the ropes here, as we say, the Guyanese companies. You know who the experts are in a particular area. You understand the permitting processes. And in many cases, assuming the capabilities exist, the costs are lower using local suppliers. We want that. Henson said his company is committed to helping local companies increase their capabilities through the sharing of best practices and working to improve competitiveness of the local supply base to capitalize on opportunities in the industry and afar. The two-day supplier development forum is the first of its kind in Guyana. 
Today, some 300 companies that have expressed interest or requested information from the Centre for Local Business Development will gain a better understanding of the procurement process, expectations and effective approaches in responding to opportunities. Tomorrow, more than 1,000 local companies will have an opportunity to interact directly with Exxon and its prime contractors during an exhibition. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. In other news, the communities of Philippi and Amakokopai, located in the upper Mazaruna Region 7, received an all-terrain vehicle and food items. Seneca Thorne has that report. The items were distributed to the communities on Friday during a visit by Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, and a team. The ATV was handed over to the Philippi Village Council by the Ministry, while the food items were distributed to the Amakokopai Village by CGX Energy Incorporated. During a simple handing over ceremony at the Amakukupoi village, Minister Alika committed to working with the village to enhance the living standards of its people. I'm quite certain you have a number of issues that you would like to raise and suggestions that you would like to put forward that we could be able to represent. But what they could do is for us to work together to be able to meet some of your demands. You have a very beautiful community here. CGX had named its exploration well in honor of the indigenous peoples of Amakupupoi, which hosts the headquarters of the Hallelujah Church. As such, Executive Chairman of CGX, Professor Suresh Narain, said that CGX will continue to support the village. Insert. From a CGX perspective, I want to say that we want to be with you from the beginning of that moment when you came to bless us. We also want to be with you. We want to be your partner. We want to help in whatever way we can. Because the gift you gave us by your blessings and your friendship is something that we could never repay. But we will try in some small measure to be here with you. The residents also had the opportunity to raise several issues and concerns. They were also brought up to date with plans for the villages in Butcher 2019. One of the major projects to be executed in Amakukupoi next year is the rehabilitation of the village access road. Seneca Thorne, InfoHub. And in our final report, the curtains came down on the 58th National Schools Championship last Friday as District 10 once again retained the title as track champions. Isaiah Braffitt has the details. Minister of State Joseph Harmon congratulated all the athletes for their participation and putting on a show for the hundreds of spectators who turned out to lend their support. He encouraged the athletes to continue to mold their talent despite if they have won a medal or not. And I urge you whether you have broken records or not, whether you have won or not, to continue your quest for excellence in your respective sport discipline as well as in your academic and future career endeavors. Chief Education Officer Marshall Hudson said the students during the six days of heated competition exhibited a spirit of enthusiasm for the sport. Sports teach us how to work in harmony with other people, exert whenever necessary, accept defeat with equal ease, and work as a consolidated unit. You are a testimony today. Major sponsor of the event, Bank ZIH, was also applauded for ensuring the much-anticipated event is held every year since its commencement in 1959. Isaiah Braffitt, Perinfo Hub. Your green tip of the day, did you know that coffee grounds are an easy, greener alternative to pest repellents? Just sprinkle some coffee grounds around areas of your home that are prone to ants and you'll get rid of a pesky problem without inhaling toxic fumes. That's all for this evening. Connect with us on WhatsApp and social media and follow our website at dpi.gov.gy. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye.